Hey everyone, this is Reshma from Edureka and today's session is going to be all about Ansible. I'll tell you how to install Ansible and how to write simple configuration files using Ansible. But first I would like to thank and welcome all the attendees for joining today's session. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, let us first look at the topics that we are going to deal with today. I'll tell you what Ansible is, then we'll take a look at the different features of Ansible. You'll learn the differences between a push-based configuration management tool and a pull-based configuration management tool. We'll also take a look at the architecture of Ansible. You'll learn how to write Ansible playbooks and use different modules that Ansible comes with. You'll also learn how to write ad hoc commands in Ansible. And after that, we'll have some fun with hands-on where I'll tell you how to install Ansible and how to write simple configuration files with Ansible, which are nothing but playbooks written in YAML code. So I hope that this agenda is clear to everyone. So guys, give me a quick confirmation on the chat window. Okay, Ayushi says yes. Vardhan, Saurabh, Shubham. Okay, so I think we're good to go. So our first topic is what is Ansible? Well, Ansible is an IT automation, configuration management, and provisioning tool. I know, guys, that these might be a lot of words for you, but let me break it down so that you can understand it better. Now, provisioning means to provide or supply something that is needed. And Ansible here does the same thing to your application. Ansible makes sure that all the necessary packages and all of the softwares are downloaded and installed in your computer in order to run your application. Okay, let's take an example to understand it. Let's say that I've got a debug version of an application that is built on Visual C++. Now, if I want to run that application on my system, I would need to meet some prerequisites. Like, for example, I would need those Microsoft Visual C++ library DLLs, and also I would need Visual C++ installed in my computer. So this is the part where Ansible makes sure that all these necessary packages and all the softwares are installed in your computer so that your application can run. And it doesn't mean that Ansible will only download it in just one of your system. Ansible will make sure that all these packages are ready and installed and downloaded wherever you are intending to run your application into. It may be in the test environment, your production server, anywhere. And configuration management means managing your software on top of your hardware. A configuration management system like Ansible also holds all the historical data of your application. So if at any time you want to roll back to the previous version or you want to upgrade it, you can easily do that with Ansible. And let's say that I want to install the same Visual C++ application on 100 of my machines. So what will I do? Will I go to each of my machine and install it manually? No it will take up a huge load of time and it's bound to errors. So what I need now is a tool that can help me configure all my systems at one go. And Ansible can help you do that. All you have to do is write all your configurations in a playbook, run that playbook, and it will get deployed in all of your systems in one go. So this is the power that Ansible gives you. And IT automation means automating your entire IT infrastructure. Ansible is a radically simple IT automation engine that automates your cloud provisioning, configuration management, your application deployment, intra-service orchestration, and many other IT needs. So Ansible will help to manage your application from the building process and in the testing and while it's getting deployed in the production server as well. So Ansible can take care of everything. And all you have to do is just write a simple playbook. Even if those tasks look pretty heavy, but actually you just have to write a few lines of code in your playbook. And just run that playbook, sit back, and watch the output. So it's very easy, and it's very powerful as well. So I hope that everyone is clear with this topic. Uh, okay, I've got a question from Vardhan here. So Vardhan here asks that, does Ansible helps to test your software the same way that other testing software like Selenium does? Well, Vardhan, that's a very good question, I must say. And to answer you, I would tell you that no, Ansible is not a testing software like Selenium. What I meant to tell you when I said that helps in testing is that it helps to provision your application throughout the testing process. It provisions your application from the start in the building process 
provisions it in the testing process and while it is getting deployed in the production server so Ansible provisions your application from the start of the life cycle till the end that is what I meant so I hope that Verdan you've got your answer please give me a quick confirmation on the chat window okay he says yes so I hope it's clear to the others as well so we should proceed to the next topic where we'll see the Ansible features now let me tell you that Ansible actually provides you with a lot of impressive features so let's take a look at them one by one the first that it's agentless it means that there is no need for any kind software or any kind of agent for managing your notes unlike puppet or chef you need to install a puppet agent and chef client on all your node machines but for Ansible all you have to do is just install Ansible in your control machine and you're good to go after that it's built on top of Python and helps provides a lot of Python's functionality of course when you're installing Ansible you'll see that Python is getting installed in your system too so you can easily use pip to download or install any Python packages and pip is a Python package manager so you can use all other Python functionalities in Ansible as well and it uses SSH for secure connections now SSH is a very simple passwordless network authentication protocol it's very secure as well all you have to do is just generate a public key in your control machine and copy the same key onto your node machines and voila your connection is established it is that simple and it is also very secure and Ansible follows a push based architecture for sending configurations now in case of Ansible whenever you want to make any kind of configuration changes on your nodes all you have to do is write down those configurations and just push them all at once in your nodes so it gives you full control on whenever you want to make changes on your nodes and also it's very easy and fast to set up and needs very minimal requirements of course when I show you how simple the installation is and how simple writing playbooks are I'm pretty sure at the end of this tutorial you'll all agree with me on this last point so I hope that everyone is clear with the Ansible features guys give me a quick confirmation on the chat window so that I can proceed further okay I've got a few yeses okay, let's go to the next topic which is the push based versus pull based now tools like puppet and chef are pull based configuration management tools whereas Ansible is a push based configuration management tool now in case of puppet and chef there are agents present the agent software that puppet has is called puppet agent and in case of chef it's called a chef client so what this agent actually does is that it keeps on polling the central server periodically for any kind of configuration information and whenever it finds any kind of configuration information it pulls those changes and then gets them affected on your node machines whereas in case of Ansible since there are no agents present whenever you want to make any changes you can make those changes directly you can push those configurations directly whenever you want like I told you before you have got full control on it you don't have to depend on an agent to pull those configurations uh, okay I've got a question from Ayushi she asked that are there any other pull based configuration management tool available well yeah of course Ayushi there are other pull based configuration management tools too like you have got cobbler and you've got CF engine but actually they are not as popular as puppet and chef so I have not mentioned them in the slide here but of course if you want to you can explore them as well but if you are thinking of using a pull based configuration management tool in your project I would definitely recommend you to use either of puppet or chef for that so let us now get back to the push based versus pull based and let us see the difference in the architecture of a push based and a pull based okay let's see what we have here in a push based configuration management system so I've got my version control system here which manages all the changes in my code base of my application and I've got my main server here this is the server where Ansible or your configuration management tool system will be installed and I've got a bunch of nodes here which are a collection of web servers and application servers and database servers and these are all connected to the main server via SSH now what happens here is that this main server 
constantly pulls the version control system for any changes in the code base. It means that it constantly keeps on checking the status of my VCS at regular intervals of time. And whenever there are any kind of changes, those specifications are sent to the main server here. And then this server decides on how to make configuration changes according to the changes in my code base. And whenever you have written all those new configurations, you can directly push them all at once onto your node machines. So you've got the full control here on whenever you want to make any changes. Now in a pull-based system, the relation between the VCS and the central server is the same. It constantly pulls for changes to the VCS for any changes in code base and whenever there are changes, it pulls those changes. But the main difference that you'd see from a push-based configuration management tool is that it has got an agent present here. Now this agent or client is a software that manages all your nodes. Now what this agent does is that it constantly pulls the central server for any configuration changes. It means that it keeps on checking the central server for any changes in the configurations that needs to be made. And whenever it finds any kind of configuration changes, it pulls those changes and then only it gets affected on the node machines. So at this point you have to wait for the agent to pull those changes and then only the configuration changes will get affected on your nodes. So you have to be a little dependent on the agent here. And in pull-based tools like Puppet, we've got the Puppet agent here. And the Puppet agent actually pulls the central server every 30 minutes. So you might have to wait for 30 minutes or a little less time in order to see all those configuration changes in your node machines. But however, you can also customize the polling time as well from the Puppet agent. You can either increase it or decrease it according to your needs. Okay, so I've got a question here from Saurabh. Uh, Saurabh here asks that which configuration management tool is better, a push-based or a pull-based? Well, Saurabh, it's a good question, but actually you'll be disappointed to know that the answer to your question does not exist. Uh, what I meant to say is that it completely depends on the kind of application that you're managing or the kind of infrastructure that you have. And I would tell you that everything has got its own pros and cons and since you asked me, I would be very glad to list out the advantages and disadvantages of each of the system. So the advantages of using a push-based system could be that you've got full control. Everything is synchronous and everything is under your control. You can see right away if something went wrong and you can correct it immediately. And also it's very simple, like I've been chanting since the starting of this tutorial that Ansible is so simple, it's very easy to learn, so it gives you simplicity. So push-based systems give you the simplicity, but the main disadvantages could be that you cannot achieve full automation with a push-based system because it's not usually possible to boot a server and have it configure itself without some sort of client or server protocol which push-based systems do not have. And also it gives you a lack of scalability as well because when you're dealing with hundreds of servers a push-based system will start showing its limits unless you make a very heavy use of threading or multiprocessing. Uh, whereas the main advantages of using a pull-based system could be that it gives you full automation capabilities because it is possible and it is indeed advisable to fully automate the configuration of a newly booted server using a pull deployment system. And of course, since you have got an agent and a client to manage your nodes, it is very easy for you to scale up. And the main disadvantages could be that you cannot configure the system whenever you want. You have to be dependent on the agent. And of course, while setting up a pull-based configuration management system for the first time in your infrastructure would take a lot of time because the agents need to be installed manually on each of the system for the first time. After the agents are installed, the configuration changes are very easy to make. But setting it up for the first time will cost you time. But sort of, I would tell you that in scenarios when you have a large infrastructure, a pull-based system is recommendable. And in scenarios where you want to make your configuration changes very quick, you can use the push-based configuration management system for that. So I hope, Saurav, that you have got your answer. Can you give me a confirmation on the chat window? Okay, he says, great. 
Okay, thank you, Saurabh. I hope that the others understood as well, but if you have any questions, you can always pop it in the chat window anytime. So I think we're good to move on to the next slide. And let's take a look at the Ansible agentless architecture. Now, what we have here is I've got a laptop desktop server. So this is the main server where Ansible will be installed. And I've got a bunch of node machines here, which are Ubuntu machines. And as you can see that there are no agents present here. All these node machines are connected to the main server with SSH. And let me tell you that it's not always important to use SSH for connection. You can use Kerberos or any kind of network authentication protocol that you like. And in this laptop desktop server, we've got our host inventory, which is nothing but just a list of the IP addresses of all my host machines. And I've got my playbook here. Now this playbook is where you'll write all your configuration scripts which will get run in this laptop desktop server and all those configuration changes will be made on these node machines. So it's a very simple architecture diagram we've got here and it's pretty much self-explanatory. I hope that all of you have understood this and if you have any questions you can ask me in the chat window. So guys are we good to go to the next slide? Okay, Saurabh says yes, Vardhan says go, okay. Okay, let us now take a look at the architecture of Ansible in a more granular level. So let's see what we have here. So I've got a public-private cloud here, which is my cloud server. It can also act as a repository for all my IT installations. And I've got a bunch of host machines here. And this blog that you see is the Ansible automation engine. So the users can directly run a playbook in this Ansible automation engine and this will all get deployed on the host here. So let us now take a look at all the components that we have in the Ansible automation engine. So the first we've got a host inventory and like I told you before it's nothing it's just a list of all the IP addresses of all your hosts here. And it's a simple initialization file and it's very easy to write a host inventory. I'll show you how to write a host inventory as well later in this tutorial. So next we've got modules. Now Ansible actually comes with hundreds of inbuilt modules. And modules are actually those pieces of code that gets executed when you run a playbook. So listen to this carefully guys. A playbook contains plays, a play contains different tasks, and a task contains modules. And when you run a playbook, it's actually the modules that gets executed on your hosts. And these modules actually contain some kind of action in them. So when you run a playbook, those action takes place on your host machines. Now you've got core modules. Now there are various core modules in Ansible like file modules, your cloud modules, your database modules. You can find hundreds of them in the Ansible Galaxy as well. Now Ansible Galaxy provides you with more than 750 inbuilt Ansible modules. But if you're not happy with those modules and you want to customize and make your own modules, you can do them too. You can call them your custom modules. All you have to do is just write a few lines of code and just make it your own module and you can run it anytime you want. And the next we have playbooks. Now playbooks here actually define your workflow because whatever tasks that you write in a playbook it actually gets executed in the same order that you have written them. For example, if you have written that install a package first and then start it, it'll do the same. It will install it first and then start it or restart it again. So Ansible playbooks always execute tasks in order. And playbooks are also very simple to write. Playbooks are written in YAML code and YAML code is a very simple data serialization language. It's pretty much like English. I'll also be showing you how to write playbooks later in this tutorial. Now let's come to plugins. Now plugins here are actually special kind of modules. Now these plugins actually get executed before a module is getting executed on your nodes. Plugins actually get executed on your main control machine. Like for logging purposes, you've got your callback plugins because this enable you to hook into different Ansible events for display and logging purposes. And then you've got cache plugins, which are used to keep a cache of facts to avoid costly fact gathering operations. 
And also we've got a special kind of plugin which are called the action plugins. And action plugins are actually front end modules and it can execute tasks on the controller machine before calling the modules themselves. And Ansible already ships with a number of handy plugins, but also you can write your own plugins as well. And these plugins actually allow you to execute Ansible tasks as a job build step. And now we've got connection plugins. Like I was telling you before that it is not always needed to use an SSH for connecting with your host machines. For that purpose, you can use a connection plugin as well. For example, Ansible provides you with a Docker container connection plugin. And using that connection plugin, you can easily connect to all your Docker containers and start configuring right away. So I think this architectural diagram is also simple as well. I hope that all of you have understood this architecture diagram as well. So guys, before I move on, give me a confirmation on the chat window. Okay, Ayushi says yes. Kisaurabh, Shubham, Vardhan, Ashish. Okay, now let's move to the next slide and see all of these Ansible components in detail. The first we've got our host inventory. And as I was telling you, it contains a list of your hosts grouped together. So we've got an example here of how to write a host inventory. And as you can see that this is just a list of the IP addresses of my nodes. And also you can name the groups of your different IP addresses. For example, I want to group my web servers together and my database servers together. So all I have to do is write a group name between two square brackets and it will be grouped together. So whenever you want to make configuration changes just on the web server and not on the database server, all you have to do is just mention the group name on the host and it will only configure your web server. And the default location of your inventory is etc slash ansible slash hosts. So this is where your inventory resides. Writing a host inventory is very easy. I hope that you'll all have understood. So let's move on to the next slide where we'll see the ansible modules. And like I told you before that modules are the ones which actually get executed inside a playbook. So I hope that you remember when I said that a playbook contains plays, a play contains tasks, and the task contains modules, and whenever you run that playbook, the modules are the ones that get executed on your nodes. And we've got a few examples of modules here. So we've got the apt module here, and I'm pretty sure that you have used apt get in Ubuntu to install any new package and the app module here does the same thing. It installs or removes package using the same apt package manager. And then we've got a different module here which is the copy module. What it does is that it copies a file from your local machine to the host. It means it copies a particular file from your control machine to the host machines. So all you have to do is mention a source and a destination now the source will be the location of the file in your Ansible control machine and the destination would be the location where you want to get it copied in your host machines. Now there's another module that does the same thing as copy. It's called the fetch module. What fetch module does is that it actually does exactly the opposite of copy. It copies a file from the host machine to your local machine. So even here you have to mention a source and a destination. The next we've got the file module and file module is one of the core modules that Ansible comes with and here you have to mention a source and a destination as well and then you have to mention a state whether you want to link those files or link those directories together or you want to unlink them so you can use file modules for that purpose. And then you've got the service module. Now this module can be used to start or stop any kind of service for example, if you want to start Nginx or you want to start running your Docker containers or you want to stop it, you can use the service module for that. And also you can explore all other different modules from the Ansible documentation. They have details of all those modules so you can check them and use whatever module you want to in your playbooks. So I hope that this slide is clear to everyone. So guys, give me a quick confirmation on the chat window. So I've got a few yeses from a few people, so let's move on to the next slide. And let's learn how to write Ansible ad hoc commands. Now Ansible ad hoc commands are simple one-line commands in order to do or perform a task. 
because sometimes when you want to do something really quick and you don't want to write a whole playbook for that you can use ad hoc commands for that purpose and we've got a few example here if you want to check the uptime of all machines you can use this command and make sure that all the ad hoc commands in Ansible starts with Ansible. Ansible all here means deploy it on all hosts and it's using the shell module here and we're passing an argument uptime. Now uptime of all machine means the time or the duration that a machine has been running. So if you want to check the uptime of your node machine you can use this command and it will display you how long your node machine have been working. And also if you want to check the date of all machines you can use the same shell module and just pass the argument date. Similarly if you want to check the Red Hat release of all machines you can pass this following argument. If you want to mount on all machines you can pass the mount argument and if you want to check the service status of all machines you can use this argument here, service SSHD status. And all of these have used the shell module, but you can use all of the different modules, whatever you want, according to your needs. So writing an ad hoc command is very simple, as you can see. So if you have any questions, you can ask me anytime on the chat window. And in the meantime, let's proceed to the next slide and see how to write an Ansible playbook. Now playbooks are the core part of Ansible because whatever configuration details that you write, you write it in a playbook. Your entire IT infrastructure gets automated by using a playbook. And playbooks are written in YAML code and YAML code is a very simple data serialization language. It's very human readable and it's almost like English. Now let's take a look at the example of playbook here. So we've got a playbook here that installs Nginx on all of my node machines. So let's see how to write a playbook. Well, note that all the YAML file starts with these three dashes on top. After that, you can mention the host that you want to deploy this playbook onto. And as you can see that the host that I've mentioned is the web server here. That means I want to run this playbook on all my web servers. Now you can mention the tasks that you want to run. For example, I have named my task here, installs Nginx on web server. You can name it whatever you want just for your understanding purpose and then the tasks I'm using the modules you can see here that I've used the apt module for installing the package nginx and I've mentioned the state installed here and then I've got a notify here which is start nginx now before I tell you what notify is let me tell you what handlers are now handlers are tasks that get run after certain triggers and the trigger here is the notify and the handlers always run at the end of the play and these are run only once. No matter how many times you run that playbook, the handlers will be run only one. And we've given this notify to trigger this handler, which is start nginx. And I'm using the service module here to start nginx. So as you can see that writing a playbook is also very simple. And if you want to run that playbook, just use this command, ansible-playbook the name of your file and .yml is actually the extension of a YAML file. Now writing a playbook and implementing it is also a very simple task. We'll be running the same playbook in the hands-on part as well. I hope you've understood how to write a playbook. If you have any questions, you can pop it anytime on the chat window, guys. So let us go to the next slide and see the growth of Ansible in past five years. Now this graph is collected from Google Trends which shows the interest of people over time. And as you can see that this green line represents Ansible and even though Ansible started slow, it has managed to earn its popularity now. The blue line here is Puppet, the red is Chef and the yellow is Solstack. So it's a good comparison with all the popular tools in the market that we have right now. And Ansible is definitely getting popular. So we never know what Ansible actually holds for future. So I think we better start using Ansible from today. What do you say, guys? Okay, Saurav says, yes, I'm going to use it. Okay, great, Saurav. So let's go to the next slide. Let's see some more on Ansible. It says that it's highly scalable and available. Of course, I've read an article about Rackspace that Rackspace has actually managed more than 15,000 of their machines using Ansible. So of course it is very scalable enough and we have got success stories from FatMap. I know NASA has used Ansible Tower as well 
and the enterprise cost is also very less it's only ten thousand dollars per year and we have got a lot of github activities going on which actually shows that a lot of people are using ansible so now we've come to the fun part and here we'll have some fun with hands-on okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to use three CentOS virtual machines here now one of them will act as my Ansible control machine there I'll show you how to install Ansible and there I'll be writing a playbook to deploy Nginx on my other two virtual machines which will act as my node so guys without any delay let's get started so here I'm using a Oracle VirtualBox Manager and I've got two CentOS machines here. So this Ansible machine here is going to be my control machine. This is where I will install Ansible and this Ansible host here is going to be my node machine. So this is where I'll deploy Nginx. For simplicity purpose I'm just using one host machine here. You can add as many as hosts as you want. And both of them are 32-bit CentOS 6.8 machines. So let's go to the control machine here. Let me open my terminal. So this is the terminal of my main control machine. So this is where I'm going to install Ansible. The first thing that I'll do is become a root user. For that I'll just type su. It's asking for password. So now I'm the root user and let's begin with the installation now. The first thing that you need to do is make sure that all your packages are updated. So for that I'll just type yum update hyphen y. No packages marked for update. It means all the packages are currently updated. The next thing that I need to do is set the EPEL repository. Now Ansible package is not available in the default yum repositories. So we will enable the EPEL repository for CentOS 6.8. Now EPEL stands for Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux and it's an open source and free community based repository project from Fedora team which provides you with high quality add-on software packages for Linux distribution including Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS and Scientific Linux. So in order to set up the EPL repository we'll use the following command. and here we go now the package here is already installed in my system if it wasn't installed this command would have installed it in your system so now that I've set up my EPL repository so let's install Ansible just type the following command yum install Ansible it's asking for confirmation why And it's done. I told you installing Ansible is very easy. So let us now check the version of Ansible that we have installed. For that just type Ansible hyphen hyphen version. And as you can see we've installed the Ansible version 2.2.0.0. Okay now that Ansible is installed in your machine let us get on with the post installation stuff like adding your host inventory and making an SSH connection with your node machine. And after that, we'll write a playbook to install Nginx on your node machine. So the first thing that you need to do is generate a public SSH key. So for that, I'll just use this command, ssh-keygen. So it's asking for the file where I want to save the key. Now, if you want to save it in the default location, simply just leave it blank and press enter. Now, an SSH ID already exists in my system. Do I want to overwrite it? Yes, I do. Now it's asking to enter a passphrase. Empty for no passphrase. I'm leaving it empty. Enter the same passphrase again. Empty again. And here is my public SSH key. Now what I need to do is copy this key into my node machine. So for that, I'll use this command. ssh hyphen copy hyphen id space hyphen i root at the rate 
So I have to mention the IP address of my node machine here. And I've already found out my IP address of my host machine using the command if config. Now what you have to do is just go to your host machine and type if config and it will show you the IP address. Now I already know the IP address of my host machine so I'm just going to directly mention it here. And now press enter. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? Yes. It's asking for the root password. Enter. So the SSH key that you have generated here in your control machine is been copied onto your node machine. So let's write our host inventory now. Okay, first I'm going to clear my screen. Clear. Okay, does anybody remember the default location of my host inventory file? Okay. Yeah, I got an answer from Saurav, Vardhan, and Aishi. Yeah, all of you are correct, of course. So I'm just going to open my file and list the IP address of my node machine there. So I'm using the VI editor. And as you guys remember, it was etc slash ansible slash hosts. So this is the default Ansible host file. Okay, I'm going to list out the IP address of my node machine here. Now I'll write the IP address of my node under a group name. I'm naming it test servers. Now even though I just have only one node machine, I don't really need a group name. Now if you have a lot of node machines, so all you have to do is just write the group name here and list out the IP addresses of all your node machines. So I'm just mentioning the IP of my only one node machine, which is 192.168.56.101. So this is my host inventory. Let's now save the file and exit. Okay, now that I've added my host machine in the inventory and I've made an SSH connection to it, so let's perform a simple ping operation using Ansible just to test out the connection. So for that, use this command, ansible-m ping and the name of the group of your node machine in single quotes, which was test servers. And it's successful. Now my host inventory is added and my SSH connection is tested. So we should get started writing the playbook. So I'm going to name this playbook as nginx. So I'm going to write nginx.yml. And yml is the extension for a YAML file. So let's write a playbook. So if you remember, I told you that every YAML file starts with three dashes on the top. So the three dashes. After that, we have to mention the hosts. Now my host were the test servers. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is mention the tasks. Now the task here for us is to install Ansible. So I'm just going to write a task that is going to install Ansible. Now, I need to name the task here, which is install nginx. To install. And now I'm using yum to install the package nginx. So I'm writing package equal to nginx. And state equal to installed. Now I'm going to use a handler here to start nginx and in order to execute that handler we need a trigger as I told you before. So I'm using notify here as the trigger. And the notify here is start nginx. Now what you have to mention in notify is just the name of the handler. So let us now write the handler. So we'll just write handlers. Okay. 
the name is start nginx and here I'm using the service module in order to start nginx so write the name of the software that you want to start name equal to nginx and state equal to start it and this is it this is our playbook so let's just save the file and exit and now let us just run this playbook so as you can see that I've got some return values here which is OK change unreachable and fail this shows that there are zero tasks failed unreachable or zero that means it was properly connected and change equal to two it means that it has installed nginx and started nginx so it's done and nginx is installed and started in your host machine it's very easy like I told you so let us go to my host machine and check if nginx is running so this is the terminal of my Ansible host machine so let's just check if nginx has been installed here for that just type in this command and as you can see that I've got a few process IDs here which shows that nginx has been installed in my system so that's it I told you Ansible is very easy the tedious task of installing Ansible on a remote machine has become so easy with Ansible playbooks. All you had to write was just a few lines of code. So thank you. That was all about Ansible. And thanks to all the attendees for joining today's session. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.